wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal parts about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pin code, 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 pin code,
who was such an outstanding master of language and style that neither before nor since could anyone come close to him in terms of mastering the riches of the Latin language. Even until now, his works still haven't lost their significance, although since ancient times, many outstanding philosophers, orators, poets, and linguists have even further developed this remarkable science. Yeah, that sort of weapon wouldn't do me any harm. In that case, off to the training gym. Follow me, hop to it. But this isn't a gymnasium. This is a library. That was a metaphor. Huh? What? Uh, this may be more tricky than I first thought. Well, looks like we'll be starting from a blank page, as they say. A blank page? Do not take it literally. That was also a metaphor. Ancient theorists distinguished three kinds of elocution. Festive. Today is a great holiday. Deliberative. Let's think whether to watch this series further. And judicial. Chico is to blame. <laughs> but he isn't to blame. <laughs> a good speech must convince, delight, and excite. But first, it has to be composed. And the composition consisted of four parts. First, it was necessary to find the material, then arrange it, then find the correct words, then memorize them. After that comes the fifth, very serious part, the actual delivery. The arrangement of speech was based on a solid scheme, introduction, presentation, development, and conclusion. Understandably, the most important part of rhetoric is delivery. The great Greek orator Demosthenes loved to talk. In elocution, the first thing is delivery, and the second is delivery, and the third is also delivery. And here, the orator in waiting has the aid of a variety of exercises, from breathing techniques to tongue twisters, and of course, an increased vocabulary. And so, after three months of intense training, what do you have to say for yourself, my friend? How is it that I previously never noticed that the whole world, the whole universe, is a world, a myriad of words strum gently on the strings of harmony, striking a sensational feeling of boundless power to you, my esteemed teacher. I've taught you everything I know. Now go and win the hearts of the people. Today isn't my uh, turn. Boys, I've, uh, 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 I've, 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 I've unfinished I just poem. don't have the time. Not ever. Uh, uh, oh. Hmm. Oh. Chico, we were just discussing whose turn it is to clean up as it so happens. Hmm? Uh-huh. We were just picking straws. Everyone took one. There's only one left. The longest. Looks like that's yours. Ahem, uh ahem. I have a dream, you see. The dream that the day will come when all of the lowlands will rise and all of the hills and mountains will descend. The hitherto uneven terrain will be turned into plains. The curved places will be leveled and that the grandeur of equality will at once be before us and that we may all believe in it. For this is my solemn hope. Wow. What was that? I don't know. Why, that's simply wonderful. That was a metaphor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Express himself. Well, yeah, yeah. Will you teach me? And us. 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 Yes, why not? <sighs> I've taught you everything I know. Now go and awaken any sleep.
sleeping hearts with your words. Ha! 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, wow. So, what's happening? How much longer must you test my patience? How much further will you boastfully display of your insight? It's regrettable to note your inability to conduct at least some semblance of a reasonable and sober debate. And that's why, with full moral responsibility, I would like to state that the conclusion has been predetermined. No one else's version is worthy of attention. Against the backdrop of such all-encompassing processes, it becomes evident that the insignificance of our impulses... What on earth is going on? We are solving an interpersonal conflict. What kind of conflict? To be honest, I doubt we'd be able to recall the root of the problem. Seriously? You don't even remember the cause of the debate? That is hardly of import. What is critical is who is able to substantiate his truth through the power of rhetoric. You've all gone mad. Look at yourselves. You've learned to speak wonderfully. But now you have to master an even more important skill. Listening to hear the interlocutor and to be able to understand his point of view is the true basis of dialogue. That's what the principles of true rhetoric are all about. That was cool. So literary, so nuanced, and yet so succinct. I think we can all agree that Colin is the victor in this debate. Impact with oncoming asteroid in five that's it. Four. We were arguing about which way Three. to turn uh -huh. to avoid the collision. Two. Huh? Well, that's One. not good. Whoa. Uh. Whoa. And what does rhetoric suggest in such situations? Sometimes, my friend, it's better just to keep quiet. A detachment led by Donko ends up in a parallel universe inhabited by unusually developed plants. While others try to solve the problem of returning home, Donko continues his search for intelligent life forms among the local flora. Though, unfortunately, his first contact ended in complete disappointment. Reckon that fluoride's somewhere near. Wow, that's a great view. Aha! Uh -huh. I can see his tracks. Here, we need a kind of funny joke about an overgrown weed, but nothing seems to come to mind. What do you mean, Joe? Everyone's fed up. Just one little problem. How do we get down there? some sort of long climbing rope. What do you think? To be honest, my mountaineering skills are not what they were. There's a better way. How about we just fly down? Fly? At our age? It's not good to laugh at the poor penguin. I'm still a bird. I didn't mean that. Uh, so then what? Maybe fly down with the help of all these local overgrown flowers. Avoiding danger and pollinating are not the only things that plants need to think about. Another thing important in the life of any flower is to disperse the seeds of its future offspring. If this isn't solved in some creative way, then the entire species will grow in one place, which of course will become way too crowded. So plants have to adapt themselves in order to find ways to disperse their seeds, each thinking it up for themselves. For example, the Rafflesia has the help of elephants for this, 
They step on her flowers and transport her seeds around her. And the wind helps to sow the field. But there are plants that grow much farther. Their seeds have learned to fly. For example, a Javan cucumber seeds can fly up to 100 meters without any help from the wind. These seeds have even been copied for aviation. And for us to get down, the common <laughs> dandelion approach should do. Let's go! I, I, I ain't going! We'll be smashed to pieces! <laughs> Let's remember our youth. So oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> there he is, over there. Let's take a look. Subject has been detected. Prepare for landing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Capricia! <laughs> hey! <laughs> nice trip! I just keep thinking, is it at all possible to have intellect in plants? Or are all their actions simply functions to protect or, you know, reproduce? Depends on how you look at it. Maybe they have reasoning, but only in their own way. Plants do not have eyes, nose, and ears. They cannot move without muscles. But despite this, we have much more in common with them than it would seem. So, they may not have eyes, but they feel the warmth and the sunlight. This is especially true of sunflowers. Speaking to plants may not work, but it doesn't stop them from communicating with smells. If one flower gets attacked by pests, it sends a special signal to its neighbor to warn them of the danger, and is then able to prepare, having summoned the necessary protective smell. Plants have other senses, too. For example, they feel the position in space. Regardless of how you move the pot, the plant will still grow upwards. And as I have already said, plants also feel touch. And recent studies have shown that they may even have memory. They also say that plants react to sound. But this hasn't been scientifically proven. Although, <laughs> I still like to chat with my vegetables. It makes them grow even bigger. There it is. Let's go and get that thing already. Now wait. If we've learned anything about the local flora, it is not to act hastily. Yeah, yeah. It seems this overgrown weed is waiting for something. You know what I'm thinking? If there are such flowers around here, then what kind of bugs do you think there are here? <coughs> here comes the answer to that question. It looks like we'll have to save our thief. Otherwise, they'll just eat him together with our device. <laughs> hey, you get out of here, flower guzzlers! Shoo, shoo, shoo from here! Get going, you ungrown butterflies! This now is our only flower alone. Boys. Back off, it's not or yours! I'll give you a piece of my mind! Stop this right now! Yeah, you get out of here! This is our glade! Hey, cool how we drove them away. 
It was even too easy somehow. Looks like it's not us they're afraid of. My lovely mother nature. Why didn't I think of it immediately? Do you mean you've remembered the earthly analogy again? Exactly. In the world of Flora, there is one amazing flower manipulator, Aqualegia. Unlike other flowers, the Aqualegia doesn't rely on its smells to scare off pests. It acts more cunningly and thoughtfully. The Aqualegia attracts the aroma of small insects, which are harmless to it, and then glues them to itself. These insects, in turn, attract larger spiders. Why is she doing this? For protection, of course. Now these spiders have become her personal security. Keeping her safe from gluttonous caterpillars, which can do her harm. And with such protection, the Aqualegia stays safe. Huh! Then it turns out that this flower noid specifically lured us in to drive the caterpillars away. No, Crash. We are the bait. For someone even bigger. That's a weed. Give us our gadget. We really jumped into a catapult. No, only a miracle will save us. It's you. L Listen, I don't know if you understand us or are just mimicking, but if you do, I beg you. Don't allow your fellow intelligent life forms to be eaten! It's no use, Daco. It's unlikely that he'll understand us. I told you. So you understand me? Forgive me for doubting. I could not imagine that you... Surprise! I'm afraid that this will remain a mystery. Were those plants intelligent? And can we, in principle, determine that we have met another mind? Maybe it will be so different that it won't fit into our own understanding. Do you miss her a lot? What? Me? Oh, believe me, this is merely of scientific interest. From the point of view of our own cosmic solitude. Well, that's a shame. You don't even know you were right for each other. Speaking of which, what is your zodiac sign? Ah. Uh, Pin, when will you find a way to get us back to our world? We're working on it! <laughs> yeah, yeah! We are working! And I'd stay here a little longer. And the night is here. Do and you take your tea with yeah. yeah. milk? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You see. I could live like this. D dessert? If you say so. Perchance. I'll dedicate a node. To you. <laughs> yes, but horoscopes, they're so unscientific. So why don't you tell me even more about this botany of yours? Eh, with great pleasure. <laughs> 